So you want to make some beautiful backgrounds for your paintings? You came to the right spot. I got some tips and tricks that I want to share with you. And they all start with these two little rocks. What do I mean by that? I'll tell you. Okay, here's a gray stone that I picked up in my backyard. And I grabbed another stone and I painted it gray. Just one coat of the same color over the whole thing. Now, we could say that both of these are gray stones, but I would argue that one of these is much more interesting to look at. Now, why is that? I would say because there's so many tiny little variations of color and texture in this whole thing that combine to make a much more interesting composition of gray. As opposed to this one, it's just one flat color, just gray. <laughs> this is the exact concept we wanna take with us when we're creating our background, even if we're creating just a neutral background, we want to make it more interesting than a simple flat color. It will give us more depth to our painting. So with that in mind, let's head to the studio and see how this works out. Here's a roadmap for today's video. We're talking canvases. They're either your best friend or your worst enemy. Then I'm going to give you three super sweet techniques that you can try out for yourself. Finally, some color combinations that I just find real neat. Step one, let's talk canvases. The canvas that you choose to use will have a huge effect on how your background will come out. It will affect the texture, it will affect the combination of colors, it will affect the drying time. All these things add to or subtract from your background painting. Here I have some primed canvas, this white surface, and some completely unprimed raw canvas. Um, now this primed canvas, what happens is when you buy it primed, this will put a coat of this white priming over top of it, and it will get rid of a lot of the texture of the canvas. Now if you buy much, much higher quality canvas, you'll still see some of that texture coming through, but the lower quality canvas, a lot of that texture, if not all of it, will be completely erased with this top coat of priming. With this raw canvas, there's no priming, there's nothing on top, it's simply the fabric. And so you are left with a lot of texture, a lot of texture, almost like denim, running your hands over jeans or something like that. And so, we're gonna do a little side-by-side -side comparison. If I add a coat of paint to this one and to this one, we're gonna see the end result and to see what type of check texture and combination is left with this one uh, as well as this one and see which one is more interesting. Now, for this example, I just have this tub of paint. I don't know what color it is. This, it's just light beige or something, light brown. Not important for this example. It's just to add a coat of paint, the same coat of paint, to each of these and see what we get. All right, we've let these two dry. Now we can compare and contrast and see which one we like best, which one we find more interesting. So in my personal opinion, these two correspond directly with that rock example I gave earlier. This one has turned out completely flat with no depth, no intrigue. There's no contrasting elements like little specks of discoloration or even specks of uh, a different texture. It's all completely uniform. Now, if that's what you want, then this is a great uh, way to get it. Now, this one, on the other hand, is much more interesting to me. There's so much more texture with this. That means our color is soaking through the textures at different rates, drying at different rates. So all of these things combined uh, gives us a much more interesting appearance um, than simply a completely uniform, flat appearance. So I personally love working with raw canvas for this exact reason. One more thing, I don't know if you can tell here, but there are specks of different colors um, all the way through this, different colors, different shapes. Um, and that's just by nature of the fabric that they used. I absolutely love that. And so, for the most part, I simply just use this raw canvas and start painting on top of it my actual painting. I don't add a background layer. 
I simply let the uh, natural canvas color and texture be my background layer. And it's turned out so wonderful. So what if I can't afford this nicer quality uh, canvas? Or maybe what I have to use is just uh, this pre-primed canvas with not much texture. Let's learn how to do some very interesting backgrounds on this, and then we'll be able to apply that to any surface uh, that we choose to use. Now, just like our rock example that we did at the beginning of the video, we want to add some variations of colors, even in our background painting. So I'm going to start by just adding a simple first layer of raw umber and white. I'm going to do that to both, and then we're going to let it dry. We're gonna add a second layer of different color on top of that, and that will give us a little variation in color. Let's take a look. Okay, these are completely dry. Let's add a second layer to these. For this side, I'm gonna add some white and a little bit of yellow ochre, and I'm gonna keep the paint really thin so that we'll be able to see a little bit uh, of this background layer. Now, this will be a different look than if you were to combine all of these colors into one single layer and paint it on. For this side, I'm going to add a cool color on top of this warm color and see how it looks. I'm going to add white to a little bit of this Payne's Gray. As you can tell, I'm keeping my brush strokes very uh, loose and a little bit chaotic. So as to add a little bit of uh, interest and um, texture, to the composition. And there we go. So we've added two layers onto both of these. And just as a reminder, you can add as many layers as you want. I would remind you to keep the layers thin. So to expose the underlying layers, the more layers that you add to your background, the more interesting it's going to become. Just like those rocks, how they were filled with a bunch of different impurities or differentiations in color and value. So will your backgrounds the more layers you add. For this technique, we're simply going to just add water to our mixture, to our paint. And add a lot of water, almost making like a watercolor painting effect. For our background. I love using this technique. This method, I call it the rag method. So I just have this spare piece of rag over here, and I have coated these backgrounds with a little bit of white and uh, raw umber. These are totally dried. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna add another layer of paint on top of these, and we're gonna take our rag, and we're simply gonna dab it around, move it around, dab it and move it around. That will give us some interesting textures on our background. Let's try it out.
Now that we got those techniques down, let's look at some color combinations you can use for your backgrounds. For this first combination, I'm simply using these three. A yellow ochre, a red, I don't know exactly what type of red this is, maybe a primary red, doesn't really matter, uh, and white. Now this will give us a very warm, a very uh, warm color for our background. We do not need much of these uh, strong colors at all. It's mostly going to be white. Now, depending on how much red or yellow you choose to use, obviously that will affect the color of your background, uh, but just remember you do not need a lot. Now remember, when you're using acrylic paints, they will dry about 30% darker than when you apply it. So if it looks too light or too bright when you put it on, remember that it'll, it'll get a little darker as it, as it dries. Okay, for this side, let's try a new combination. Once again, we'll just use the same white, and this time we'll use a brown, a dark brown. This one is a raw umber. Once again, we do not need very much of these darker colors. It's going to be mostly white. Okay, for this one, we're gonna continue with the warm uh, backgrounds. And so I'm just using this uh, burnt, uh, sorry, raw umber, uh, yellow ochre, and uh, just more white. And this is gonna give us a darker, uh, richer background. Okay, for this combination, oh, this is absolutely one of my favorites. We're gonna keep the same raw umber, yellow ochre, white, and just add some green to it. Now this is kind of like an olive green color. If you're looking to create some emotion in your background, I would recommend this. I would say don't be afraid of mixing the colors on the canvas. Um, sometimes we want it to look perfect as it goes on, but trust me, if you're going for a natural, um, interesting background look, mix the colors on the canvas and see how it turns out. I, I guarantee you, you'll be pleasantly surprised. Okay, we did some warm colors. Let's do some cool colors for our background. Now this one, very simple. Payne's gray and white. Payne's gray and white. Now, if you've ever used Payne's gray and mixed white into it, you know that it will turn to almost a bluish color. That will give us our coolness for our background. And once again, we do not need very much Payne's gray. I probably won't use all of this. Let's give it a go. Okay, this is Payne's gray and white. Let's do a little black and white and see the difference.
Okay, here is what we did today. We did our three techniques on top, our layering, our water method, and our rag method. Uh, and then here are our six little color swatches that we did. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Please let me know any questions or comments you have in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. Consider liking and subscribing and sharing it with a friend. I'll see you next time.